and welcome to the Sam Dever Podcast, episode 16. In this episode, I talk with Chelsea Cruz. Chelsea is a marketer, a consultant, a producer. The list goes on. She's multi-talented. I met her back in Las Vegas uh, several years back, and she's just an amazing, brilliant mind, and I really enjoyed this conversation we had. Uh, I will plug her film. It's called Hidden. It's uh, one that she produced, wrote, and directed, and I highly encourage you to check that out as well. The book of the episode is going to be The Untethered Soul, The Journey Beyond Yourself by Michael Singer. I've read this book twice now, and it's incredible. I mean, really, he really broke me open uh, just in terms of how I view the world, how I view myself, things I was in my head about. He really puts in a different perspective. So if you're looking for a really deep read, and I picked this book uh, because Chelsea and I definitely got deep on this podcast and really both about inner work and, uh, you know, creating awareness uh, within yourself. Uh, I really highly recommend The Untethered Soul by Michael Singer. So without further ado, here's my conversation with Chelsea. Chelsea Cruz, welcome to the Sam Dever podcast. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> There's no like special effects or anything. It's just oh. over here. <laughs> you have a, uh, do you have iPhone? Yes. Do you know uh, like when you send happy birthday to someone and uh-huh. it like explodes confetti and all that? Yeah, scared the crap out of me the first time it did that because I didn't know it did that. So I was like, happy, but what the hell's happening on my phone? <laughs> I, like, I didn't I'm realize this, this age where new technology scares me. <laughs> like, the flip phone, honestly, is looking more and more appealing to me. <laughs> like as yeah. time goes on, I'm like holding on to my iPhone six plus as much as possible. Oh, I love that one. That's the. Oh, I didn't have the plus. I had the six S forever. Mm-hmm. I refused to move past it. And then the oh, what's it called? The in, internal antenna died on it so it wasn't even connecting to my cellular network or anything i was so mad so now i have the se which they basically created for people like us who didn't want to leave the six (laughs) so now i have the se so i'm still still have a six no it's in the drawer broken so now i officially have the se so is the se just called the se like it's not there's no number attached to it yep yep oh Wow. Yeah, it even has a fake little thumb button. It doesn't do anything, but it has a little like vibration in it, so you uh-huh. think it's a button. <laughs> they literally <laughs> made the phone for people that only like the six. So, <laughs> well, I'm holding on strong, but eventually, AT and T and iPhone know the day is coming where I'm gonna have to yeah. get that plan. But I paid it off, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna pay an extra twenty thirty a month. Yeah, for another see. three years. It's like we're gonna we're gonna hold strong <laughs> here. Yeah. <laughs> good hold well, on to that yeah <laughs> well it's great to see you thank you so much for coming on here um you're you, i would i would count you as one of those people that make it worth being on social media oh thank you because i'm to the point where i'm like <laughs> why am i even on the, like this is stupid but but it's conversations with people such as yourself in the dms yeah. and, you know ig stories when we like we're talking about certain things I'm like okay this is cool so i'm glad that we yeah. get to take that conversation and continue it here um so i just thought maybe we'd start uh, i know you do many many things i mm-hmm. met you in las vegas uh i don't want to say many moons ago but <laughs> it has been many many moons. Been a minute <laughs> we connected uh, through different las vegas productions and could you just tell uh for people who may not know who you are a little bit about yourself and what you do yeah um, as you know, my name is Chelsea Cruz. <laughs> um, it's my main specialty, if you will. Um, professionally, is definitely marketing and producing. Um, I love philanthropy, so I'm very involved in that in my personal life. Um, and then super personal life is very big on like that self-growth and compassion and, you know, just trying to make life as pleasant as we can while we're here. And then work on all the fun hurdles and trains that smash into us along the way. So, <laughs> guaranteed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, what what got you into marketing? And I guess I've never really asked you what got you into the producing and the marketing game. 
Um, well, I view them as two different things. Mm -hmm. Um, so the marketing, I've always been interested in that even as a kid, like I remember being like, Oh, well, why would they choose that color? And why did they pick this and stuff like that? But I didn't know it had a name, you know? Um, so then, you know, fast forward, you know, growing up and what do I want to do? And I really loved acting like that was, I felt like performing and stuff was like my calling, if you will. But there was always some kind of a roadblock in it it was really interesting hmm. very frustrating for sure um so then when i got into college um i originally enrolled for film and then uh, very quickly that was not the college for me i felt that everything there i could learn outside of it it's not an industry that you need a degree to learn or be successful in um so i'm like well if i'm gonna get an official degree i want to get one in something that and at the time, you can't just go out and learn yourself, if you will. Um, so, you know, back then, marketing was not as uh, accessible as right. it is nowadays, um, which I think is great that it's really kind of moved itself to be easier to get involved in. But um, so I chose marketing, but I was still doing acting. I did that majority, you know, for work and stuff through college. Um, and then met my good friend, Will Edwards, you know, he was oh. on your podcast as well. Yeah. Um, so I met him on an acting job that we were on. Um, and then, you know, he started his own show. So then he asked me if I wanted to be a part of the business side of the show mm -hmm. as well. I did skits and acting and stuff too, but that really was where it kind of popped in my head. And I really like fell in love with that business side of the entertainment industry that mm -hmm. before you know i was very like no i'm only going to be in front of the camera that's all i'm going to do you know an artist <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i'm like i don't know if that's really a logical way of thinking especially if i want to make this a living you know um so yeah i finished my marketing degree and then just one thing kind of you know after another it built itself into what it is and you know, I'm still very involved, you know, in that entertainment aspect of things, but more on the business side of stuff now, not so much, you know, in the front. Mm, and yeah, we did. We did meet on the set of Will show. I think that's yeah. where we first met, possibly the Will Edwards show. I think so. I think so. That would make the most sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. We have some in common. That's what I got my degree in, too, is marketing. Oh, awesome. It makes sense. That's, that's inter but that's interesting because I was marketing first, then I got into acting, but it sounds like you were acting, then got into marketing yep. a little yeah. bit. I, I want to talk more about your acting. So what, how long did you do acting for? Is that something you did in uh, high school? Yeah, or? professionally, um, seven years. Wow. Um, I did it. I first got the courage to get into it in sixth grade. <laughs> Um, and then um, couldn't do it the rest of it because I had to move schools and then got right back into it in high school. So I did it all throughout high school. I couldn't do like the plays. I don't sing. Um, I can barely dance, but if you teach me, I can fake it well enough. <laughs> um, so it was more just like a hobby, if you will, at the time. Um, so then a few years after I graduated, that's when I was like, no, I really want to like look more into this. How does this work? You know, so I got the headshots and the classes and all that kind of stuff. And um, I don't think I got a single job through an actual agency. Everything was networking, you know, mm -hmm. through just meeting people and they like you or you have good synergy with them. And um, yeah, so it just kind of kept going that way. And then the uh, Great Recession hit. <laughs> so a lot of us all went to work to find out they were canceling the shows and laying oh everything gosh. off. So um, then I was very unemployed um, and unable to move. You know, everyone else I knew moved to New York and California to scrounge up, you know, work that they could. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't able to do that at the time. So then that really was when I was like, okay, this is not going to be for me, you know, as much as I love this and that truly is like where I wanted my life to go. It's just not where I'm able to go, you know, because of that yeah. and how much effort and money and time it takes to really build a business from being a performer. Yeah. Um, so the whole, you know, school and marketing and that kind of stuff like seemed to click really well, you know, then I met Will and then, you know, we had our, you know, amazing company for so long and mm -hmm. all the different projects we oh were involved in. 
you know, so yeah. I got to bring up the, uh, was it called We Funny? Is that the name yeah. of it? Yeah, we talked about it in the world. Yeah. That was such, you guys did such a great job with that. Like that was a huge accomplishment and arguably probably one of them. When I was living in Vegas, one of my favorite things entertainment wise to go check out. Especially, Aww, awesome. especially when I told Will, like the older I got, like when you, you get out of that party phase, the Vegas yeah. party phase. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's like, right, I don't want to go there at midnight. I want to be done no later than midnight. <laughs> yeah, I want to be back at home. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you guys had a huge run with that. And that was such a great production. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we had that a long time. Yeah. We've had a lot of babies throughout the years. <laughs> a lot of creative babies. <laughs> a lot of little creative babies, yeah. And who knows? There, there's, I'm sure there'll be many more creative ones coming someday, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about marketing for a second. Get your take on this because this is something I – so I love marketing. Mm -hmm. It's always been a passion of mine, but at the same time, especially now, I don't know if I'm like a jaded marketer. No. <laughs> but it's like I feel like – I, I like what you said, like, I don't know, 10 years ago, eight years ago, marketing was a completely different thing. I mean, obviously now how much of it is ruled by this right here. Oh yeah. The mobile, That's right? Um, and I love marketing because it's related to psychology, but with that being said, I mean, it's obviously somewhere, I remember going to the guidance counselor in college and she's like, I knew I was going to do business, but I had to mm -hmm. pick like which way. And she's like, do you want to get into finance or marketing? And I started thinking about finance <laughs> and uh, barely scraping through business statistics and like, uh, like skin of my teeth. I'm like, yeah, we're going to go with marketing. <laughs> yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to do that uh, finance math. Like I'm not trying no, to get no. into that. But yeah. so it's fun. It's fun. It's creative. It's open. But at the same time, especially now that we are bombarded on, with social media and advertisements more than we probably ever evolutionary should. Yeah. <laughs> uh, weren't meant to come in contact with. I feel there's a lot of manipulative marketing and it can be very manipulative and it can also be very negative in a way. Do you, do you have any take on that or any opinion on that? It's just a thought like I've been having about it lately. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think when it comes to marketing, um, especially even just professionally, like you have to decide what your ethics are and what your morals are. Um, and then you have to decide if you're personal morals and ethics are can you turn those off and turn those on for what you do for a living you know or are they intertwined um you know for me especially the older i get they're very intertwined so i am very very hypersensitive to what i will do for employment you know mm -hmm. basically which you know might come back to the overall purpose of you know doing whatever i need to do here so i can not come back <laughs> uh, which know. we'll talk about that <laughs> yeah um but yeah but it definitely can make things tricky you know or just to see things for let's see how do i word this so as a marketer i see you know the commercials the ads the social media print work digital whatever it is I see it first through the eyes of how that got created and the algorithms, what the, what they're doing and, you know, monetizing the social media, how many likes and followers and, Oh, they're probably making this much, you know, uh, per post and all that kind of stuff goes through my head first. Mm. And then, then maybe second, then it'll be like, Oh, well, Hmm. I don't think that's not even real, <laughs> you know, um, like that's very manipulative, you know, yeah. or I'll have friends or family members that will fall for it, you know, whatever it is, you know, and I struggle because I try to explain to them, like, it's not real, you know, but they're so caught up in it, in the reality of whatever that post is or the commercial, whatever that it's like, I feel they just, it goes through like one ear and out the other. And it's like, I'm literally trying to tell you right now that like, it's not real. Like it's yeah. fake. Like I, I don't make that kind of stuff, you know, cause I'm not comfortable with it, but I know exactly how they did it, you know? And they're still like, well, you know, I mean, I'm sure a little bit of it is probably true. And I'm like, no, oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so Sometimes it's frustrating or really sad to me to see that, you know, happen. And it's like, I can't, 
I'm not strong enough to combat what they're doing. You know? Absolutely. No, I, I told a friend the other day and I, I love what you just said. Um, I feel like when social media started, it was nothing but good. Yeah. Then we hit like this neutral space. I'm like, yeah, it's good, but you got to be careful. But now I feel like we're in danger alert. <laughs> yeah. Danger alert, Cause like what you just said, you can't, I think as IG stories can be amazing. I mean, it's hilarious. It's funny. There's so many funny things, but on the same token, there's a lot of dangerous stuff too, because I mean, people just share memes like they're the encyclopedias now. Like, like this is, and that goes both ways, right? Like it could be a meme with some good knowledge, but it also be a meme that just complete BS. But like you said, it's so powerful. Once people see something and it makes sense, like how this person put it, I mean, that's where it gets really dangerous. I think it's just like, cause now we're just, we're just flooding everyone with information left and right everywhere. No one knows what's real, what's not. And, it, and again, you can't undo it. Like you can't, you can't unseen a lot of this stuff. Basically, it's a gift and a curse, right? Anyone has the ability and power to put out a piece of information. And at the same time, anyone has <laughs> the ability and power to put out information. And some people are very good at making it look good and you know, making it kind of make sense. And like you said, like you can't undo it or you can't stop it. Like Once someone psychologically sees it and they, it registers with them, I mean, it's very, it's very powerful stuff. So I think with yeah. this marketing, it comes with great responsibility. And I was just seeing you know, if you yeah. have any thoughts on that. Well, it's like false advertising. I mean, what happened to that? Like, I remember, I have no idea the years that that was a thing, but I remember growing up as a kid, I was always hearing like lawsuits and stuff like that happening because of false advertising. And I don't really feel that exists anymore for the most part. Like, I mean, you know, a lot of stuff that is on social media and posted is complete false advertising, you know, through influencers who aren't following their ethics or their morals or, you know, whatever it happens to be now. Like you said, you know, social media and marketing's in the hands of anybody, you know, which is a great thing because you can start your own business easier. You can build your brand easier, you know, especially for artists, performers. It's, you know, really opening that door of freedom for your business. But there's obviously a lot of people that are out there, you know, that are selling like these stupid miracle products or, you know, claiming that they got in shape this way when it really is like, you know, protein diets, heavy yeah. weight lifting, you know, <laughs> maybe a little bit of help from a doctor, like, you know, or whatever, even businesses, you know. Get rich in 30 days. <laughs> yeah. You know, I see so many social, you know, influencers out there that are claiming that, you know, you can make a living off of social media, so hire me to teach you. But then right. when I go research them, they barely have any followers. You know, like <laughs> there's, I'm like, what? So you're selling a package of something that you can't even accomplish yourself. Like, but I don't know. I feel like before you can even get on social media an account, you should have to, you should be given the education and knowledge of what social media really is mm -hmm. and given the tools for it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, then it's up to you to believe what you want to believe or participate by whatever, you know, you want to do follow whatever. But I think we need to be honest with people about how it works. This may be a terrible analogy, but it reminds <laughs> me of like, um, like if you want to go hunting someday, like you have to take hunter safety courses and so, cause you're yeah. handling firearms and stuff like, like it's like, yeah. you gotta take a social media safety course <laughs> because you are, <laughs> especially when you get bigger, you are, I mean, you are influencing a lot of people and we're so glued to the phone. So glued. Oh yeah. You know, we're zombies. To them, yeah. So, you know, yeah. we almost have to be now, like even yeah. someone at a job, um, they were, uh, able to watch their child's sports game while they're at work because somebody was there and, you know, having it uh -huh. live. And I was like, oh my God, that's like so cool. Cause you know, then they could still be there. And then when they got home, they could still talk to their kid about the game and what was going on. And you know, it was like, oh, it was like that's one of those cool. moments. Yeah, I was like, oh, I love technology. And then some days I get on, <laughs> you know, social media or stories or something. And I'm like, God, I hate technology. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, we'll save this for the end, possibly. But we were talking about false advertisement. I couldn't help but start thinking about online dating. <laughs> oh, my God. Don't even. 
<laughs> it is so scary <laughs> out there. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, but before we get to that, I do uh, the Tobias Project. Yeah. Could you tell us about the Tobias Project? Sure. Um, it is, is a yours. Very fluid thing, I would say. Um, originally, it was started as um, an actual project, a year-long project, and every single month we did uh, um, active compassion. So we would partner with a local facility or a local um, awareness topic um, to, to try to help, you know, as much as we can get things out there. Rather, it's a, you know, pizza Valentine's Day party for kids at a shelter or, you know, clothing donations, cleaning up a park, whatever it was. Um, and then after that year, we kind of felt like we did with it what we wanted to, you know, for that year. Um, and then we wanted to do something, I don't want to say like bigger, but we wanted to do something that we could maybe reach more people in a more personal way, if you will, especially with awareness. Um, so something that's really, you know, important with me is the awareness for very dangerous people, very manipulative people, very abusive people. Um, a lot of those have very set, you know, red flags. Um, and I don't feel it's talked about a lot. You know, I feel there is help out there once you're like trying to get out of it, which is like, you really don't want it to get that far. <laughs> um, so we decided to make a film. Um, it's a docu-film is what I call it. I don't know if that's an official name or not, but... Um, Heard it here first. Yeah, docu-film. I'm docu sure it's already being used out there, but um, yeah, it's a docu-film. Um, it's a, you know, more of a short, and it's a hybrid of representatives that are reading real statements from survivors, from situations, um, and there's two people in it that are their self. Um, there's a child and a woman, and they're telling you their real stories. Um, but then you're also, as these people are explaining their situations and these warning signs to you, you're watching a scripted, uh, you know, film um, of a woman and a friend that's going through this, you know, with this other person. And um, so, yes, yeah, so that's kind of where the Tobias Project has kind of left off. Um, the film was very draining for me personally. Um, it took a long time to write it and then, you know, be able to produce it and then get the energy I needed to direct it because it is such a heavy topic, you yeah. know, and it's a topic that I do have personal experience with as well. So there was a lot of triggers that were coming up. There was a lot of stuff I had to step back you know, and just think, and what do I want to do? And um, so, yeah, I just kind of stopped putting that pressure on myself to like, just get it done. This is what you need to do. You need to do this and this and this, and it has to be this. And I'm like, okay, hold on. <laughs> this is about helping people. So we have to take our time, you know, make it properly, you know, let it organically do what it is that it wants to do. And yeah. So it's kind of, you know, where I'm at with it. You know, we finally got it completed and done. So it's the first project, film project, um, that I've done that was like my own, you know, not joining somebody else's. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to kind of, you know, have it go out there. And every time I hear someone saw it and, you know, it helped them or, you know, oh, I had no idea that this was even a bad thing. I felt so crazy dating this person or my mom or my dad or whatever. Um, you know, it makes it worth it because it's just out there to help people. So, and the name of the film is Hidden. <laughs> Hidden. Uh, what, what was the the theory behind the title? Hidden. Uh, there's a lot, a I'm sure there's multiple meanings <laughs> that could be yeah. attached to this. Um, I think the main one that I feel the strongest with is as someone who's in that situation, you start to hide. You start to hide from your friends and your family. You start to hide the signs that you know aren't correct. Mm -hmm. You know, you might even personally start to hide them from yourself, um, which I think is the most dangerous thing about those kind of people. And then obviously society doesn't talk about those warning signs. They don't talk about trying to not get involved or get away from those people, even if it's a family member. You know, so it's a very hidden you know, chaotic, dangerous thing, I think, that's just floating under our society. 
Yeah, and one, uh, I believe it's in the beginning of the film, uh, not to give your film away, uh, but I think, um, and I apologize, I'm going to butcher this term, but things like, is it called toxic positivity? Or yeah. uh, things like where someone's complimenting you a lot and you think mm-hmm. that, oh, they love me, or oh, they, they have my best interest at heart, but really people yeah. overuse those in a, mm-hmm. in a manipulative sense. And that's yeah. one thing that film showed me, or at least made me. I'm like, whoa! I didn't even think of that <laughs> yeah. before, but it's so true. Like, I never yeah. thought of it like that. Oh yeah, it's very dismissive, you know. And um, the name Tobias Project came from. I had a brother. Um, he passed about ten and a half years ago now, but his middle name was Tobias, and mm. he really did live his life to help other people. He was very, very intelligent. Um, just the way he thought about things. I don't know. Like, I can't even put it into words what it was. I definitely am very lucky to have had him in my life as long as I did. Um, so I think a lot of that kind of like rubbed off in my writing and stuff too, to try to take such a complex, scary thing and try to make it like, Oh, Oh yeah. Well, duh. Oh my God. (laughs) You know, and once you see it and once you know these things, you know, love bombing and toxic positivity and self victimization and just all of these things that people do, then it's really obvious to you going forward, you know. Love bombing. That's what it was. I couldn't oh. remember. It. That's what it was. Because, yeah, there's a, a scene in that film where that was used. And yeah. it, at first glance, you think, like, oh, what's the big deal? Yeah. What's the big deal? But then when you start adding up all these different behavior patterns over a course of time, you're like, Oh, I now in future situations, it's not that I I also don't want to go into every situation expecting the worst of people. No, of course not. But I think it's very important to see this Mm -hmm. side of things. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, because let's call a spade a spade. I mean, what's the divorce rate in the United States? I mean, it's 50%. And that's just in like romance. And so think of how many relationships are out there that are in turmoil or, (laughs) Uh, this and it's it probably because they're dealing with things they don't even know what the root cause of what's going on exactly a lot of times, you know and I found myself in situations like that it's not that it's bad like no one's bad people sometimes yeah. but we're, we're dealing with in practicing behavior that I've never been taught mm-hmm. to even look out for that <laughs> mm-hmm. or that I might be doing it and even though I don't think I'm doing anything manipulative or wrong maybe I am you know, so I think you bringing that awareness is huge. Yeah, that's good. I'm glad. Hopefully it can help more people. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I like what you said too about not rushing to finish it. Yeah. You know, especially with the topics you're dealing with. Because I've been in that mode too before. I'm like, well, and, and there's a time and a place for that, right? There is a time and a place. Yeah. Like, let's just, there is such thing as good enough. <laughs> let's, yeah, exactly. let's wrap this. <laughs> but, you know, with this being, you know, your, your baby, if you will, like you, you know, taking it from the beginning to what it is now. Yeah. You know, do it right. So I really, we probably taught you a lot about patience too, I'm guessing. Yes, it did. I think patience with myself, (laughs) Mm. you know, it really made me realize, I think like how like mean (laughs) and rushing I can be like a different, you know, cause we're all made of different parts. Right. So Mm -hmm. like there's definitely a part I think in me that can be very like, you know, just harsh and cold, I think, with some of the other parts. So it really kind of helped, you know, bring that to light and, you know, figure out, okay, why, you know, why is she like that? (laughs) You know, let's, let's dissect that. Let's heal that. You know, let's be nice to each other. (laughs) What was it like being your own producer to yourself? (laughs) It was hard because I definitely, um, oh, what is it? There's a really great book and there's different tendencies people are. uh, I want to say obliger. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm a questioner and an obliger. So mm-hmm. obligers tend to, um, you know, for other people, you know, or maybe it's an upholder. I can't remember now, but it's really great. <laughs> it's called <laughs> the four tendencies. Um, it might be an upholder. But anyway, it's where you do stuff for like other people. So like if you were to ask me to do something or you needed help with something, I will 150% get it done. I'll be on time. You know, I'll do everything I need to do. But when I have personal goals of mine, you know, that aren't affecting other people, I tend to drop the ball a lot. 
Oh. Yeah. So knowing that about myself, you know, I was like, okay. So I kind of had to like find ways to like trick myself. You know, this isn't necessarily only, you know, for me, yes, it's my project. I have to produce it, but there's so many people that are reaching out, want to be involved, want to do this, want to help, you know? So I tried to view it as like, I'm helping them produce what we're doing. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. <laughs> You're right. Because sometimes, yeah, when we, no, we're the only ones that have to answer to us. Like, yeah. well, I'll get it. You know, <laughs> I don't have to yeah. do this now, but we bring in just that one person to kind of give you that mental accountability. Definitely. Yeah. Or procrastinating. I realize I procrastinate a lot of stuff because I'm avoiding the anxiety I'm going to get by mm -hmm. doing it mm -hmm. or what the results, you know, of that uh, action or event might be. I just don't want to deal with those feelings. So I kind of just procrastinate doing it, you know, till the very last minute. Now I have the pressure on myself. I have to get this done, you know, and then I accomplish it. So I've kind of created that unhealthy pattern, you know, through my life of doing it. So I've been working on that as well his last hmm, probably a like year and a half, I think. Yeah. That's, I bet you're, I'm sure you're one of those people too. Like I found like I was, I'm very good at getting busy. Yes. <laughs> like I create busyness out of nothing. <laughs> yeah. And that can be a good thing, yeah. quote unquote, productivity wise at times, but at the same time, it can also send you through a hurricane. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, you don't even know what's what. You've lost presence. Like I don't even, you know, you're not. Yeah. You know, you're I'm just, just always thinking about the next thing. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It's like, well, why am I doing that? Am I avoiding something? Is there right. some. <laughs> you know, energy that I'm converting into being busy, like. Yeah, see, so here, here we go. This is where the conversation, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I feel like <laughs> there's times where I create something to avoid something. Yes. Like, it's like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't feel like facing that right now. So um, let me, uh, let me put together this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me do this yeah. video. This yeah. is going to take up all my time for two weeks. Now I don't have Exactly. To <laughs> yeah. You're like, oh, I'll go clean that later, you know. <laughs> What, because uh, you, you're a very aware person, and that's what I really enjoy talking to you about and respect about you. What, where did that awareness come from? Like, what, what was there like this aha moment where you started to examine things within your life, or has it just been over time, just kind of learned it? I think it's, I think I've always, always, always been that way. Like, literally, like, even like in my mother's stomach, like, I've always been very, like, hyper aware. Um, I'm definitely a hypersensitive person. I'm definitely like an empathetic person. So I've had to learn over the years how to balance that, you know, how to, um, I don't know, just not let yourself kind of like, you know, spiral in one direction or become very cold and hardened by not, you know, embracing that. But, you know, even when I was born, you know, like you could tell I was like, oh, this is going really nice. Okay. And then I started to turn, you know, they said, and then like my mom's blood pressure was going up. My heart was going up. Like I was just not happy to be having to come out of my little home in there. Uh. You know, like, I like sucked my thumb, like the whole, like, I don't know, two, three months or whatever, you know, of even being a fetus or whatever. <laughs> like I was very content in there. So even coming <laughs> out, I've been very like, just, I don't know, just hyper aware of stuff, you know, like even when I learned to walk, you know, everyone obviously helped me learn how to walk, but they said one day I was just sitting there and like looking around and I think I was getting frustrated at something or another as usual. And I just like grabbed onto the table and I was like, that's it. Like <laughs> I just kind of like started to kind of lift myself up, you know, and hold on to the table and slowly walk to like whatever I wanted or something like that. Um, so yeah, no, I can only imagine like what this world seemed like to me if I could remember, you know, as like a six, seven, eight month old or two year old or something. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Mr. Nobody? No. With Jared Leto, Leto, however you pronounce his name. Great movie. It, oh, uh, I like it. One of the concepts they introduce, and I've read this in other places. <laughs> well, speaking of Instagram memes, there was actually a meme about this too. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, or a picture with words. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So some think when we're born, we're coming from the holding bin and Mr. Nobody, like it was babies, like in a holding bin oh. and they had been reborn into that. And they're like, you're going to be born, but you're not going to, you'll know what's going on, but you won't be able to talk about it. 
Oh my god! Uh, so like when we're born, we're born with this high, this this extreme strong consciousness and memory yeah. of maybe a past life uh, or wherever we came from, and that's why they yeah. say you go out. Someone's like uh, the reason why you're screaming when you're born is because your last memory is you dying in the last life. And oh it's god! Like, it's pretty crazy when you think about it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't. Know, do you have any thoughts on that? Because like, I, and they said like the the more you get trained in society, then you do, you get conditioned basically. Oh, and I then you start to forget everything. And now you're back yeah. to this consciousness here. Like, yeah. what the hell is this? <laughs> where, where are we? Like what, what's going on? Um, yeah. it's, it's just interesting to think about or talk about. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, I think, I think everybody comes from something different. I think mm -hmm. that's where I'm very open mind with whatever somebody's, faith system is or science or nothing at all, mm -hmm. you know, whatever they believe in, I think it's correct because it's correct for them, you know? Um, but with that, you know, I definitely, for me personally, you know, I really enjoy Buddhism, you know, so mm -hmm. I really believe a lot of that, you know, category of stuff, but you're definitely conditioned. And I think that's where those struggles come into play. You know, rather it's negative conditioning from your environment growing up, your family, you know, schools, where you went, where you grew up, whatever it is, you know, you're conditioned with these things that might not fit what you actually want as a person because it's what you're being forced to do because of your surroundings. And then, you know, you get older, you know, 20s, 30s, 40s, however old you are when you're like, well, who do I want to be? <laughs> Right. You know, do I like eating meat? You know, do I believe that? Or, you know, do I want to do this? You know, maybe I want to just work a very simple, basic job in a small town somewhere and just really enjoy life in a garden and not, you know, the hubbub right. of the city or vice versa. Mm. You know, um, I think that's when some of that, you know, uh, hurricane happens, you know, because now that's going to break some of those friendships. You know, it's going to cut loose some of the connections you have with other people. Cause you don't, that's not really who you are. You know, you're changing, but you're not really changing. Like no one allowed you to grow up and be who you wanted to be from the start. So it's not changing. You're changing back. I think. <laughs> or you're like, you're like uh, chiseling the stone and you're, we're finally yeah. starting to see the statue. And I, I have this talk with people all the time. I mean, how many, and, and when, again, I say this, I'm not, saying it like when you think this way there's any superiority or it's n not okay to be like this but there are mm -hmm. some people i think that go their entire life and they don't even know who they truly were yeah you know because it, it's so easy to get stuck in certain cycles and everyone's situation is different maybe there's a good reason for that but yeah I, I find so much value in taking that time to do the work to explore yeah. yourself to expose yourself to different things and the more you do that, right, the more you do find out. Maybe you do find out you like meat. Maybe you find like, you know what? I really don't like meat. Why yeah. am I eating meat? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, um, and it's not that you don't like certain people, but you, you guys just outgrow each other. You, that just space and it just naturally kind of yeah. goes. You had that time with that person, and, but now you just, you're, you're hitting a different plane of realizing who you are and what you're into and what, this was over here just doesn't serve you anymore. Yeah, that's true. You know, and I think a lot of relationships you find out are a little more one-sided, you know, mm -hmm. than we really thought they were, you know, like, you know, there's person A who, you know, really needs, you know, is, is you know, the needy person, let's just say, you know, they always, you know, need something. They always want to talk about their self. You know, they always, you know, they only show up when it's their problems, you know, mm -hmm. just that kind of a thing you know, but you genuinely like that person, <clears throat> excuse me. So you're going to kind of, you know, become their enabler, you know, to whatever they need, <clears throat> excuse me, because you want them. Oh. Yeah. You know, you want them to be in your life. Um, but you might not realize that. I know that's something I definitely have fallen into, you know, throughout my years. Um, <clears throat> and then once I stop enabling those people, there they go, you know, because it wasn't genuine. It wasn't a real friendship. Someone told me something interesting the other day. It was, they said, some people just want an ear to bend. 
Yep. And I'm guilty of being that ear that gets bent to, a, <laughs> to, to an extent. And like, it, it's, a, it's a fine line because you want to be there for people. You want to be a good friend. You want to help people. But then you do realize there's certain patterns, and this goes to awareness, where it's just always something. It's just always something. And yeah. you realize that it's not that they directly care that it's you that they're talking to. They would be talking to the light, the light <laughs> standing yeah. right here, you know, if yeah. the light will listen. Yeah. Um, and that's saying that that's not saying don't listen to people. Don't uh, yeah. ignore them completely, but it does get to a point where I'm finding the more you get in tune with your energy, the more I'm like, mm, I got to protect this. <laughs> like I, I, I'm an open person. I definitely want to be there to help people. But if you yes. start getting pretty toxic and now you're, you're hurting my energy for no good reason, just because yeah. you're just blah, 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 blah. blah. Like, um, yeah. I'm learning now to be able to feel good enough to be like, Hey, I, I, I respect your space. I respect where you're coming from, but I, I got to mm -hmm. exit. <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, say it in a nice way, of course. Exactly. You know? Yeah. No, having boundaries is I think boundaries, really important. That's something I did not even know what a boundary was <laughs> until I mm. want to say like, Oh, I don't know. Like five years ago, I think in therapy, I've had my same therapist for the last like 10 ish years or so. And she mentioned, you know, boundaries and I was listing things off and she's like, no, those aren't boundaries. And I was like, oh, I was like, well, what the hell's a boundary? <laughs> and I realized like I have no boundaries, you know, like I, I make my boundaries based on what makes other people comfortable, you know, mm. that's not a boundary, right. you know, um, so yeah, that's definitely been a thing, you know, and for caring about people, you know, I think there's a big difference between being, you know, uh, a shoulder to cry on or, you know, just someone that is being compassionate and caring and then being used of course, by yeah. people, mm. you know, and it sucks when you find out that you are being used by, you know, people that you, you know, thought were, you know, friends or family or whatever. And a lot of them, I don't even think realize they are using you. Mm. You know, because they're so used to that dynamic of what that relationship has been. And then when it kind of changes, they're like, oh, so you don't want to be there for me anymore? And it's like, well, no, <laughs> because <laughs> I'm always there for you. You know, that's the only time we have a connection is when you need me to be there for you, you know. So it's like you said, like you literally could probably put, you know, a blue sweatshirt and a you know a wig <laughs> on a lamp and they would wouldn't even notice that it's not Sam you know like, yeah you know but it's hurtful so I think a lot of us you know we don't want to deal with I think that hurt and rejection that they they truly don't care at the core of it you know yeah you wow there's a lot to unpack there <laughs> yeah there's a lot <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, this is this is how we got to the podcast, folks. <laughs> we know you just can't you can't text this stuff back and forth. It's, it goes so deep, right? It, it's like because I too have realized like uh, about boundaries lately, and you said it really good there, where you're saying like, "Oh, I didn't have boundaries. I was just uh, you know adjusting my comfortability to what they they were. You know what I mean? And like, no, that's not a boundary. That you adapting the. I, I've been a people pleaser a lot in my life. And, and there's not terrible things about that, but there are definite things where you do, you're just kind of going with wherever they're leading <laughs> you to go instead of, yes. saying, hey, I'm willing to do that on some things, but knowing myself well enough to be like, mm, yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, follow yeah. that gut feeling and, you know, are you happy? And if you just turned, you know, like, let's just say, you know, the path you know, analogy, if you just said, Hey, let's go over here and you turned and they said, okay, whatever. And kept walking. Okay. That's, that's a big red flag right there. You yeah. know, like you should be on this path, friendship, dating, whatever it is, you know, family, you're kind of on this together, mm -hmm. you know, in some way, shape or form, you might be on the other side of the fields talking to each other, but you're in the same field. Yeah. You know? And if they're not willing to do that and be there when you need them or, you know, maybe start to go a little bit of a different direction. Is that even a real connection? You know, right. you're just filling up space because, you know, that's what, I think that's what a lot of people do, especially with dating. <laughs> I, I was just is, about to say, I think. Filling that void, you know, they don't care who it is. <laughs> like, 
And now we transition to the magic section of the podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great transition. And I'll, I, I'll lead off just by saying I had a recent I, – I, I go on these runs, right? Like I'll go on an online dating run, and then I get burnt out, then I delete everything. So I went on one recently. <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't that it was terrible, but I do – like relating it to boundaries and stuff, um, I do see the importance of really knowing yourself when you do start dating someone. And as exactly what you just said, instead of just filling up space, because the more you do get to know yourself, the more I'm, I'm speaking for myself, I'm comfortable with me. Like I'm fine, me mm-hmm. being me. Yeah, you have those moments where, oh, that'd be nice to kind of have someone, but I'm not mm-hmm. just going to just fill the space. <laughs> Like, no. oh, you are a woman? How about you come here, sit next to me? We have nothing in common? Great. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> woman, sit next to me, you know? <laughs> yeah. A lot of it's ego, too. A lot of it, and I, I don't know, I go through these phases, too, where I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm in my mid 30s. I need to be dating or finding someone and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, hey, man, life is this huge journey. There's other stuff outside of that. It's mm-hmm. a great part of life, but mm-hmm. don't think it's like make or break so i i don't know i'm i'll i'll puke all over the place with this stuff so let me get your take on dating chelsea in 2021 what do you think about it (laughs) um it's definitely i think you need to know how to date Mm. i think it's really important i don't think you should be dating if you are not healed if you are not secure being alone, if you feel fear and paranoia to think about not having a partner, you're probably not mature enough or ready to have a partner, you know, because you're only trying to find one to fill that void and heal that fear of not having one, you know, and we don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what life's going to bring at you. You know what I mean? So you really can't think that, you know, oh, my life's not going to be complete and I can't do any of this stuff if I don't have the partner. You know, you should just want one. You want it. You want to be in that relationship. You want that person. You don't have to have them. And I think that's the biggest difference is with previous generations, there was always that pressure. You know, you, you know, grow up, you get married, you have kids, you stay married, you know, Um, all that kind of stuff. And I don't think that really exists as much. There's definitely still the stigma and pressure that's there, but I really feel like that's kind of dying out. And so the way I think a lot of people still acted in the privacy of their home, just the neighbors, people, they didn't know about it. You know, people kind of put on those masks you know, if you will, rather it's, you know, infidelity or not liking who you're married to or whatever your situation is. And I don't think the masks are around anymore. (laughs) So it's very, very uh, just full frontal, I think is kind of how stuff is. Um, Yeah. And I think you just, you have to take people for what they're showing you they are and not benefits you know what is that called give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to bad stuff or if you're just not interested in somebody that's fine you know you don't owe anybody anything you don't owe anybody two three four five dates to decide if you're gonna feel that you like them or not like i know right away if i have a connection with somebody or not i know right away what that means we might not be compatible but i know if i want to experience that or not. Um, and I'm told often, usually obviously when it's like, you know, no, you know, I don't really want to meet you or I don't want to go on another date or whatever it is. You know, they're like, well, you can't make that decision after just one date of meeting. And I'm like, but you can make the decision that you want to see me more after only hanging out once. And I can't make the decision that I don't want to see you anymore. Like, if we're supposed to be unbiased about it, then let's be unbiased, you know? So I don't know. It's definitely very, it's very toxic. And I think you have to know how to see those flags and have the boundaries. And then just like when you see it and those boundaries are not respected, you have to just go because where is the relationship going to go? I mean, 
it's not going to be healthy, obviously, or even last. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I didn't want to interrupt you because I'm like, no, this is the promo cliff, right? Oh. <laughs> no, you're so uh, – I'll send you my invoice or send me the invoice for this therapy session. <laughs> oh, man, you said so many things there that I really aligned with. Um, oh, good. I'm not alone. <laughs> well, well the, I think one of the big things I, – I, I, no joke, you have blown my mind on this podcast right now when you said very interesting about the masks. Mm -hmm and how there's less and less of them as opposed to back in the day, which yeah. you were saying, where you're getting people more full frontal now, which would make sense that you probably do have more single people in a way because people can see through the BS more now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense to me. You know, and, if, and even if they don't see it in the beginning, eventually I, I saw I was listening to some dating thing. They're saying like people can only fool someone for so long. Like yep. it's very hard to fool some, you know, some people have done it, been successful maybe for decades, but more than likely about a year, year and a half is as long as you're probably going to get before the true self <laughs> reveals yeah. itself. So yeah. I just thought that's very interesting from a psychological point of view or a sociological mm -hmm. point of view. Mm -hmm. that maybe back in our parents' generation, grandparents' generation, it was, Hey, you two like each other good enough. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, you make this work for the next. Now, don't get me wrong. The true love exists. It does. Genuine. Yeah. But how many of those situations were, well, we were just there at the right time. We had kids. We, we, we stuck it out. That's what we do. Yeah. Not bashing but, that, but it, it's no. just interesting yeah. to kind of look at it through that lens. Yeah. And I think that like true love aspect, I think it, at least just my humble opinion, it all roots down to respect. They respect mm -hmm. each other. You know, and they've gone through things that, you know, you might have no idea, you know, because they're, you know, your grandparents or your parents or whatever, you know, and they all have these lives that are completely separate from, you know, you being the kid in the situation or even friends, you know, you don't know what's happening in somebody's relationship, you know, if you're not in it. But I think having that respect for each other is the ultimate, I think, glue of whatever it is and i think that creates that kindness and you know you help me and i help you and we're in this and let's yeah. talk let's be honest you know if there's issues tell me you know and then not bulldozing that person when they tell you hey i'm a little uncomfortable with this or this energy or whatever like yeah i don't know if you've read the untethered soul it's by uh michael singer i believe uh-uh my it is on my list of stuff that I keep hearing about, but I haven't read it yet. You know what? I'll make this the book of the episode, which I'll do at the <laughs> intro. I'll film after this. I okay. think it's in this book. Yeah, I think Power Eckert might talk about in Power Now, too. But just the concept, okay. I mean, similar to what you said, where you've got to create your own happiness or joy or be whole on your own. You can't be seeking another person to come fix your crap. <laughs> no. Nor no. should they be seeking you. Now, does exactly. that mean you guys yeah. can't be there for each other? Of course, of course, you can still be there for each other. But yeah, you have your happiness and wholeness. They have their happiness and wholeness. And when you come together, you create a third wheel of mm -hmm. happiness and wholeness you share together. But hey, yep. if this wheel goes, guess what? You two are still two complete whole individuals. You'll both be fine. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. I've been in that boat too, where it's like I'm going all in on this. This <laughs> is going to be my happiness and. Yeah. I'll tell you how that works out. It doesn't. No. <laughs> so, and it's no. not good for you. It's not good for them. It's not no. good for either of you to be in that space. No, not at all. You know, because eventually, you know, things change. You know, it's normal. Yeah. And I think that's another issue. I don't know if this is like a new thing, you know, like our generation's dating or what. But like somebody will be 100% into you. Like, you know, we're in this together. Blah, blah, blah. And then like all of a sudden you don't get the good morning text and you don't get the good night text. And then all of a sudden they're busy and it's just work. And you're like, is it just work or is this, are you, you know, like I've learned it's called slow ghosting and breadcrumbing. There's actually new terms that we have now in our generation for it. <laughs> breadcrumbing. Um, yeah. But it makes you feel crazy because you're like, 
or at least me, like I'm a very like upfront person. Like if I feel energy changing, you know, I'm like, Hey, you know, are you just not feeling this? You know, it's totally fine if you know, you're not like, but I don't want to be strung along, you know? And it's like, no, no, no. It's, you know, it's just work or I'm just busy or I'm just this. And it's like, okay, well, I'm going to trust you then, you know? Um, but it seems to be a pattern with people I talk to or things I've experienced as well, where it's not, it's a lie. You know, like they were losing interest, you know, rather it's people I know who do that to other people or people that have had it done to them. And that's where the breadcrumbing comes along. You know, just like if you're trying to like, you know, catch a little, your cat because it got out or something, whatever it is, you know, <laughs> you know, you put these little breadcrumbs out so that other person still is like still kind of attached, you know, they're, you're, you're texting them enough. So they're like, Oh, you are just kind of busy. Okay. No worries. You know, but then slow, but sure. Those little breadcrumbs are farther and farther apart, you know, and that's where it's come up with the term of like slow ghosting, you know, instead of just cutting that person out of your life, you know, overnight, which is insane to me, unless it's a, a dangerous situation, then yeah. yes, you have to ghost those people. Yeah. Um, Instead, they, you know, slowly rip off this Band-Aid now, <laughs> over, you know, a few weeks or months or God, it could be years for some relationships, I guess, you know, and it's like, but why? Why? Like, even if the other person isn't a healthy person when it comes to communication, you owe it to yourself to leave a situation when you know you're not feeling it anymore and you don't want to work on it. You know, it's not up to anyone to want to work on things with you. You know, it might hurt. It's going to hurt, you know, but do you want to be with someone that you're literally forcing them to make it work? Like, yeah. I don't know. I'd rather just not be with someone than someone who feels forced to be with me. Rather it's a friend or business, the job, romance, whatever it is. I want only authentic stuff. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You need to write a book. <laughs> Uh, no, yeah, I I totally agree, and I personally need to get better and uh, just more. I don't know if confidence is the right word. It's not that I don't have the maybe it is, but just more strict on myself. Like recognize, like yo, there's no connection here. Cut. It's yeah. nothing against that person. It's nothing against yeah. you. But why are we going to waste our time with this when we're dealing in the realm of romance? You can still be friends and stuff like that, but the yeah. breadcrumbing and the slow ghosting and the and the, yeah. well, you know, no one else has come along right now. And I might as well stick it out and see where this might, you know, like you do. I, I agree. Like, you know, like, you know, yeah. you know, when there's interest, you may yeah. not know what that interest is, but you know that there's something yeah. there to I some know. degree, you know? Yeah. Oh, I agree. I know um, a habit I had is I can have chemistry with people. Not anymore. Cause I've, you know, worked on myself finally <laughs> but <laughs> if i have chemistry with somebody it did not matter if we're compatible it does not matter if it's healthy none of it matters like if i have that weird chemistry that i have with someone or i don't have there's no in between with me then i would rationalize to the moon and back like i would like what boundaries who needs boundaries you know <laughs> maybe i'm just maybe i'm in my head about this maybe i need to be more open minded you know yeah you know i'm hypersensitive anyway i overthink you know maybe that's what's <laughs> happening you know like so i don't know what i still don't i don't have an answer for why i do you know would do stuff like that uh, but it's definitely something that as soon as I feel chemistry, then that other part of me is like, okay, thanks for letting us know there's chemistry. Now back off, you know? <laughs> and so then like the boundaries part of myself, which mm. actually this is really good if people don't have. I don't know if you can see that. What the heck is that? Yeah, I love her stuff. She has a book. It's called Unf Your Boundaries. Her name's Faith Harper. Wow. She has a few audio books that are great, but she has these really cute cards. Um, that are all different boundaries and stuff, which is, you know, a fun icebreaker, I think, too, for people. But, uh, but yeah, it's when those boundaries need to come into play, you know. Same, you know, like you were saying with you, like, you know, it's like, okay, this isn't working. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't feel it. Mm -hmm. Maybe they crossed a boundary that you do or aren't even aware, you know, that they crossed. But why waste your time? Like, and why waste their time? Yeah, why waste their time? Yeah. You know, like, just, I don't know. I'm going to get a pack of those cards, by the way. <laughs> They're so awesome. Boundaries cards. It does, yeah. Uh, 
there's a million things I could say about what we've been talking about. One quick thing I do want to say on this topic uh, about the red flags. I never took those seriously till recently. Mm. And when there's a red flag, there's a red flag. It's kind of the, the saying, if it walks like a duck, talks like a duck, it's a duck. Yes. But that rational mind you t- you're talking, rationalizing, I'm like, yes. well, <laughs> maybe yeah. for some people this would be a red flag. But I think in this case it's different. But sure enough, yeah, it leads you. And maybe there's red flags with me. There, and there could be. And that, that again, that goes to the self-work and the healing, right? But yeah. there, there are certain red flags that I've noticed lately where I'm like, yeah, I think I, I've been around the block now a few times with this one. It's like, we got it. We just got this yeah. has to end. It can end cordially. It can end professionally. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't have to be an ugly end, but it can just say, hey, you know, this this isn't going to work. We must yeah. move on. Good. Good for you. <laughs> oh, thank you. This yeah. is like, you know, like the Tony Robbins of dating right now for you. Oh, God. No. No, I have so far to go. Like, it is not... <laughs> Yeah, I definitely I, have to thank the therapist. <laughs> I did. I, we're getting to it. We've about hit that hour mark, and this has been an amazing conversation. Yeah. Um, uh, I did want to ask you, you about your therapy. I, it sounds like that's been a good experience for you. A hundred percent, yeah. I definitely used to be the person that's like, I don't need therapy. That doesn't make any sense. I know how I feel. Uh, and then someone close to me, it was after my brother had passed, um, she reached out to me and she's like, I really think you would benefit from this. Like, it's not what you think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I went and I was not a fan of who they were seeing. It was not a good match for me. Um, but that therapist referred me to the therapist I've been with since then. Um, and you just have to, I think, just find, you know, the right therapist who is focusing on what you need help with just like you would you know if you're tired all the time you're going to go to a nutritionist you know if you're you know if your skin's breaking out you're going to go to an esthetician or a dermatologist Mm -hmm. you know trainers whatever it is you know and the same thing with your mind your confidence whatever it is you know you need that person who's unbiased and educated in how this works you know (laughs) So I can trust her to tell me, like, is it me? Is it not me? Like, what, mm-hmm. what, you know? And she'll be like, yeah, that was really a wrong choice for you to do. <laughs> ah. Let's work through that, you know? Or she'll be like, no, that was not your fault at all. Like, you know, I can trust her to be honest with me. And I think that's important to have. Yeah, I think that's something I definitely need to look into. Because you find out, like, when you talk things out, how things get better. It's when you keep things in your head that... Mm-hmm lead to crazy town <laughs> and, oh, yeah. and make you like start w- questioning everything and wondering this and wondering that. But when you just pick up the phone and have a phone call and not, uh, not to be a total hypocrite on what I said earlier about not listening to certain people. No, there are those times where a friend, a good friend calls you and I know oh, yeah. right then and there, my job is just to listen because I know they're talking out whatever they need to talk out. And I've been on that end too. And it's amazing yeah. how better you feel mm-hmm. when you're just talking it out. Oh yeah. Working through it, you know? Definitely. I mean, the brain works on patterns. That's how it works. Connections and patterns. And um, so we don't go two hours into a podcast. There's a really great thing that they've proven over the years called, and I I might butcher it, uh, neuroplasticity. Hmm. And it's the proof that you can rewire the connections of your brain. Hmm. Um, Which, you know, a lot, I think a lot of the books that you've probably already read, you know, kind of talk about that because it's like the repetition of things. As soon as you realize you're getting frustrated, okay, let's breathe. Mm. You know, why are we getting frustrated? Why does it matter that person cut you off in traffic? Mm. You know, every time you do that, you're rewiring that brain from going to being mad for being cut off to, oh, I don't like they did that. Let's breathe. You know, and then through time, you're not even mad that they cut you off. You know, so I think. exactly. Yeah. We've been conditioned to get (laughs) mad at certain things. Yes. And I realized that about myself. Conditioning. (laughs) Conditioning. (laughs) Um, Well, there's, we could talk for two, three hours. I'm sure. No problem. Um, (laughs) Really quick. uh, Where can the people uh, find your film? Yeah. So the best thing um, I have a Facebook page and an Instagram for the Tobias project, uh, T O B I A S project. Um, and then all the links and posts and everything will be on there. Um, and then it's on YouTube as well, but you can access that through the Instagram page. And not to 
uh, influence your last word, but one thing we were talking about in the pre-recording room uh, was you told me a long time ago this concept of this is my last journey here in this world. And yeah. this, like as, as maybe a human, I don't know. I don't know if we <laughs> want to expound upon that, but I just want to let you know I, I've never forgotten that. And it's always given me a perspective of, okay, may, maybe I am here. There's some things I need to figure out that I haven't figured out yet here and lessons yeah. that I need to learn and things like that. So I just want to thank you for that. That was, that was I don't know, it's it, you're very Bhagavad Gita-ish, uh, very... <laughs> <laughs> you know, just being in the present moment and understanding right. that we all have a role to fulfill on this earth. And so thank you for yeah. that. But the last word, if anything motivational, inspirational, a thought you've had, it could be more about dating stuff, whatever you want. Oh, um, I mean, I think it's important to kind of leave people, with, you know, compassion. I think if every day we really do kind of think about like, what does that mean? Um, I think, the entire world would act very differently. You know, if you have compassion for that person who's doing something that you don't agree with or you don't understand, it really helps, I think, kind of ground everything. And, you know, we're all in this together somehow. So <laughs> that's something that I try to focus on. It helps me anyway, you know, with anxiety and overthinking or getting mad about stuff or whatever, like just stepping back and observing. So. Yeah, maybe it'll help other people. <laughs> awesome. I dig it. And if you could stick around after I stop the recording, yeah. uh, we'll wrap. But Chelsea Cruz, thank you so much for yeah. doing this. I really This is, is going to be some good ear candy for people. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Yeah, this is, this is some good. I, I, I look forward to, uh, I always uh, listen to it right away. You know, I'm doing like this self-edit in my head before I yeah. do it on the computer. I'm looking forward to this one. This, That's this awesome. It's going to amp me up. So, uh, thank so thanks much. for having me. No, thank you for coming on the Tobias Project Hidden. Go check it out. Chelsea, we will talk soon. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye.